Welcome, welcome back to my channel. If you're watching this channel, you are in a safe place watching Food for Thought with Barbara Cooking Diva. Yes, that's right, that's me. I'm a certified chef, classically trained, and a certified culinary nutrition. And we're all about the four major F's in my life and perhaps your life too. Faith, family, finance, and of course, food. Each week, we get together where I share nuggets of goodness from some of my dearest friends and professionals in their own rights, where we talk about one of the major F's. Today, I'm going to be sitting down with one of my dearest friends. We go way, way, way back. We're talking over 30 years from high school. And we're going to pick his brain to find out his perspective on parenting. Parenting girls, parenting as a single dad, and really dig into what the male perspective on this very, very, very important job those of us who are parents have. I'm talking about none other than, oh, Stephen Pear. He is an author. He's best known for his book, Release Expression, but have accumulated a body of work over the years. He is a facilitator with the Toronto Writers Collective. He's the father of two beautiful and amazing young women that he is going to share some fatherly thoughts with us today. He has compiled a number of writing. He seeks to share perspective, share stories through the written expressions. Please help me welcome my dear friend, Stephen O'Pair. Welcome to the show, Stephen, and thank you so much for joining me on Food for Thought. Guys, don't forget to like, subscribe. If you like the content, go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe for more goodness, and share. Stephen, welcome, friend. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure being here today, and I'm just ecstatic. Um, you know, for this next move that you've made, uh, I've I've seen your your growth over the years, and yeah, we've been in conversation on so many different subjects. Um, but I'm just so excited about what you're doing with your cooking, man. You kill me those pictures on social media all the time, and I'm sitting there, my mouth is drooling. I'm looking at the pictures, and I'm like, I wish there was a technology that could just grab and pull. But, um, you know, it's so exciting to see you cooking and now to engage in this conversation. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. Thank you for inviting me, Barb. Absolutely. You know, when I thought about bringing this show to life, you and I have had many conversations in the past where we talk about some of these major things that affect our life. Our faith is very important to us our family, you know, we talk about finance and just navigating our way through life. And I wanted this to be a space where people could come and just get information, be inspired, be uplifted to live more rich and fulfilled life. And so I couldn't think of a better person to talk to when it comes to parenting, in particular, father. How fathers parent their children and girls. I mean, I have a son, so it's a different perspective, and I am a woman. And I, and I truly believe that we approach this from different perspective in some regard. And oftentimes, the male perspective gets overlooked. They're not heard. They, they are not, uh, there's no platform uh, to, for them to express their feelings and emotions. And so a lot of it gets set aside. And while it's important that we hear from mothers, I always uh, believe that it's important that the father 
play just as important a role in the child's life. Um, and so I really wanted to talk to you and share your experience and hear your thoughts and idea on the subject. And I think there's no better way to kick this off than with this first question. What is the best advice you have ever received as a single dad? And do you think fathers are oftentimes overlooked for the role they play and not given the credit that they deserve? Uh, the best advice is in this, this single st statement, stay connected, stay close, stay engaged with the kids. Uh, it wasn't easy. And it isn't easy, especially as fathers, because we, we do, there are certain expectations set on fathers and, and, um, and it, it's not an easy task. Um, you know, especially if you're by yourself, if you're alone, uh, you can have those challenging moments. But the thing that keeps me going is, it's a circle of guys that I have, that constantly I stay in touch with, that encourage me, that, that, that speaks life into my own being um, as, a, as a man, as a male, as a father. And I, li I like the fact that you actually started off by saying that you're, you're a mom and you have a son. And that experience is different. Um, it totally is. And, and I think that's, that's the beauty of parenting. There isn't a one size fit all for everybody, but uh, but the opportunity and and you know I I, I go back to the, your, your question. What was the best advice? It's just stay stay in touch. And you know there are days when I'll, I'll talk to my mom, I'll talk to my friends, and they say, Stephen, irrespective of whatever, stay in touch with your kids. If it's five minutes that you have with them make that five minutes the best five minutes ever um you know just listening to them watching them um, spending time with them but you know as men as fathers do we get overlooked <laughs> absolutely a lot of times and sometimes it's disheartening you know sometimes it, it it can be frustrating but the bottom line is never look at where you currently are with the kids. Always keep the focus on the destination. And that destination is you wanna be a part of your kid's life now and in the future. Because at some point in time, they're gonna need you. And they're gonna be asking questions. They're, they gonna, they're, they're, there's gonna be that desire to want to know, okay, dad, you know, what should I do in this situation? And, um, and the mere fact that you're present, you know, is key and important in the kids' lives. Absolutely. And, you know, in particular, when a father is parenting and fathering girls, you are the model that I think we as women look towards our father for what to look for in a man. And so whether consciously or unconsciously, you're doing a lot of modeling. So that connectedness is so key in, in, in really parenting children, but in, in particular, if you're a father of girls, because you, you, you play a different role than if you were parenting boys what you would be modeling, it would be slightly different. You're modeling the characteristics of what you are telling your daughters that they ought to look like. What is the representation of a man, a father, a husband? And so your very being and being present in their life is a reflection of what they will ultimately look to. So that, that is so key. You know, when I think about parenting, I, I often think about the one thing that I think I should know most about my child 
or what is the thing that I need to know about my child? Because sometimes as parents, we forget that we need to not just raise our children, but we need to get to know them as individuals. So what should every father, especially single father, know about his kids? And in particular, if you have daughters, what should you know about your daughters? Barb, that is the magic question. <laughs> Uh, especially if, especially if you're not around your children, you know, 24 seven or around them a, a lot, it is a tough thing to, to find out what is that one thing you need to know. And, and oftentimes asking them, you know, you can ask them, they, they may not necessarily tell you because oftentimes, sometimes they don't even know themselves. But exactly spending time with them. I know like, like, you know, my two daughters, they're, they're totally different individuals. One is more talkative than the other one. <laughs> the other one doesn't talk much. Uh, literally, I have to be like pulling things out, trying to get information from her. Whereas the other one, she'll tell me stuff and she'll talk, you know. Um, but the one thing you really want to know about your your kids or your 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 child or your daughter in particular is who they really are you know as an individual you really want to know that um it is important because it allows you to be able to speak into them um to, and help them recognize their their value and who they really are. Because you, know, you spoke about identity earlier. Um, identity is critical, especially for girls. Um, boys, yeah, absolutely. And boys seek their identity in, in, in different areas. But girls seek their identity in their, in their um, whole physical being, you know. They want that feeling of acceptance that they're, they're beautiful, that they're accepted, um, that, they're, that they're appreciated. And um, and that's something I think is important for for girls. And as such, you know, I always strive to to constantly figure out, okay, why are they feeling this way? And you know, like sometimes when my when my daughter is down, you know, I'll ask her like, is everything okay? She's like, yeah, yeah, yes, daddy. She, you know, she she brushes it off. I know that she's not fine. <laughs> But you know, sometimes you sometimes you gotta push, and sometimes you gotta pull back, and just allow them to to be who they they want to be. Um, so I try I try and create that balance mm -hmm. of um, recognizing who they are as an individual, um, you know, who they are as as my daughter, um, because you know, she is my daughter. And I, and I always maintain that, that father-daughter relationship. Um, she's not my friend. And um, I'm very keen on that because, I, you know, I know some parents will say, oh, yeah, you know, my daughter's my best friend. Um, no, she's my daughter. Um, and that's more important to me. My best friend is different. I treat my best friend differently than I treat my daughter. Uh, my daughter is, you know, I have that line where I maintain and she knows those boundaries where she, she can interact with, with me as well. Um, so I think understanding and knowing those key pieces about who that person is, and again, spending time helps to bring it out. And it doesn't happen in one instance or, or um, at any particular stage because you know from birth, as they develop, they're constantly changing. They're constantly going through different uh, emotions, different feelings. Uh, my my oldest daughter when she was a when she was a baby, oh I was her hero. <laughs> now it's shift. <laughs> She's totally on her own. So um, so you know recognizing the changes in the different stages of life as well is always important. You know it's funny that you say, and 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 I totally agree with you. And I would say it is true for boys as well. Uh, knowing 
who your children are as individuals. Investing the time to get to know them, the nuances of their personality, things that are of interest to them. Spending time in conversation with them is one of the greatest ways you can learn who this little person is. They want that. Um, I remember when my son in his third year in high school announced to me and his father that uh, he doesn't want to study engineering anymore when he goes to college. He wants to study history. And his dad was totally surprised. And if you know anything about a Nigerian background, there are only four things you can be. A lawyer, a doctor, an engineer, maybe an accountant. That might slide. Anything other than that, what are you talking about? And he was totally surprised by this because he was good in math and science. So, but I was not because I got to know him on a deeper level. I knew that he had a keen interest on government and history and politics and he likes to write and he's a deep thinker. And so we would have these deep conversations about life, present and past, and he's great at telling stories. So for me, because I had seen and gotten quite intimate with that side of his personality, it was no surprise to me. So you are, you're right on the money. You have to get to know your child's personality intimately by spending time with the child. So that brings me to my next question, Dad. What is your proudest moment of being a father to your girls? What have they done to just make you just go, ah? Because you know this parenting thing, Stephen, I don't know if you've experienced this, but there were many times I would question myself, did I do this right? Did I make a mistake? And you're constantly wondering if you're doing a good job. And it's only when they say something or do something, totally unaware that that is the validation that you sought to go, okay, Maybe, maybe, maybe I did that right. What's, what, what's something that you're proud of when, that your girls did? Uh, it's interesting you said that, because <laughs> I think every parent <laughs> goes, through, <laughs> goes through that moment where you're like, okay, I'm gonna mess it up here. Um, and you know, I, like I, I go to my male friends and I call them, I'm like, I think I'm messing up here because my daughter doesn't like me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but my proudest moments, uh, it, it's an interesting question. Every time you have a proud moment, another proud moment comes up, comes along the way. And, and it just blows your mind. Like, I, I can tell you, um, there are two distinct proud moments for me for each, each child. My oldest, a proud moment was, uh, I used to volunteer for... Um, an organization called Kids Help Phone here in, here in Toronto. And every year around May, we'd go for a walk. It's, you know, walk, you raise funds and you go on this, this trail for, for a walk. The walk was about, um, how many kilometers was that? It was about six to 12 kilometer walk. And I remember taking my oldest one. At the time she was three, I took her on the walk with me. And um, so I said, you sure you wanted to come? You want to come? And she says, yeah. So she had her little sippy cup <laughs> and we went walking. And Barb, she walked the entire walk going. And in fact, um, the year before I took the walk and the walk was a little bit longer. But what I didn't realize was they had actually cut the walk short, shorter this that year. So I went on the usual walk <laughs> and I kept walking and I realized, okay, we're the only ones here. Nobody else is here. So we start, we turn back and we started walking back. On the way back, she stopped me for a moment and says, daddy, can you, can you lift me up? And I said, sure. So I put her on my back and I was walking with her. So I figured, you know, she was tired. No, she couldn't take it anymore. And I walked with her a couple, a couple yards. And then she says, you know what, dad, I'll walk the rest of the way with you. And that little girl walked all the way back with me. 
And to this day, I still have a, I have a picture of her. I took a picture of her with her little sippy cup and her walking, because that was a proud moment for me. Um, <clears throat> so that's the older one. The younger one, a proud moment was one day I was, um, so they came by me on um, one, one Sunday night. We had dinner and usually I take them home after dinner. So I time, I, at the time I was taking the bus, so I, I timed a time when the bus was coming. So we were running late and for sure we we're gonna miss the bus. And I'm like, so I was like, girls, come on, run. We gotta go, otherwise we're gonna miss the bus. And my youngest one, she said to me, she said, Daddy, if you say you're going to miss the bus, you're going to miss the bus. So don't say you're going to miss the bus. Say you're going to catch the bus. <laughs> and wow. okay, Barb, in that moment, I stopped in my tracks. I looked at her and I had to, to correct myself. And I said, okay, sweetie, we're going to miss, we're not going to miss the bus. We're going to catch the bus. And positive thinking yes and and that just blew me away and when she said it i was like wow and we, we caught the bus and i looked at her when we got on and i smiled yeah. and those those are two proud moments that i have but every since then i've been having proud moments it, you know it's like sporadically they they just pop up and they just blow your mind you know like like the other day, um, my older one, she's, she's in arts, she's in high school now, she's doing arts. And she recorded, uh, because, because of COVID, so, you know, they're doing virtual school. So she actually wrote her skit out. And then she asked one of her friends to help her to do the skit and did a audio of the skit. You know, and there were like four characters in it, two persons and four characters. Can you imagine that? And, you know, so that, you know, she changed her voice for one character and do it. And so I asked her, you know, like, what are you working on? She said, oh, I'm working on a play. No, she normally don't plays what she's doing. She never wants to share it with me. So I insisted this time. I said, I want to hear it when you're finished. So she, she didn't send it to me, but I have access to her YouTube channel. So she sent it to her teacher and then she uploaded it on our YouTube channel. And normally when she uploads something, it sends me an alert on my phone. So I saw it and I, I started listening to it and it blew me away. I was like, she wrote the entire script and acted out the entire story. And uh, I had to call her afterwards and I'm like, sweetie, I'm so proud of you. This was awesome. This was amazing. And she says, really, Dad? And I was like, yes, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and um, so I followed up with her recently and asked her what, her, what grade her teacher gave her. So she said he gave her a 90. So I said, well, what happened to the 10? <laughs> she, said, she said she can't remember what she actually said, but she said it was very good. Um, but she got a 90 for it. Yeah, so those are like some proud moments. Of course. You know, it, it, it's just... We get to a point in our lives that we sit back and we go, what really matters most now as a parent to us, you know? And, and, and we look back to our parents and some of the lessons that they have taught us that we are now using to help navigate this path and this journey that we're all on, you know? Um, it comes with no manual. But we certainly can rely on some of the knowledge and experience passed down to us from our parents. What matters most to you now at this stage of your life? And how much of that was influenced by your own father and your own life that you have now passed on to your girls? I think what matters the most is being a part of their lives. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a big piece and heck, it's probably kind of tearing me up right now. Yeah. Um, but being a part of their lives, irrespective of, because I lost my dad when I was 18, um, daddy passed when I was 18 and, and it was tough. 
it was really tough. To this day, sometimes I still have those moments because, you know, sometimes I wish he was still here um, for me to introduce him. Hey, here are your grandkids, um, you know, but he, my dad passed on a lot of things to me over um, during my, that 18 years I was with him. And one of the things that I really learned from my dad was playing. You know, my dad used to play with us as kids all the time, all the time. And my mom wasn't the, the, the playing type. You remember her. <laughs> yeah, my mom was the playing type. And even sometimes my dad would want to play with my mom. And she's like, leave me alone. <laughs> yes. Uh, but, but that was my mom. That's her personality. Yeah. yeah. So, my dad was the one to play, um, whether it's just, you know, just teasing you about something. Um, you know, one of the things my dad used to always do, and I think he used to do it with a lot of people, he'll put his, his hand on top of your head and then use the other hand and <laughs> on top. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I caught myself doing that with my kids as well. And, you know, it, it's, it's rather interesting. But, yeah, I, I think that that was one of the big things that I learned with my dad um, was, was playing. Um, and, and ultimately, the, the ultimate piece is, is spending time in the Word and training up your child. You know, the Bible says train up your child in the way that they should go. And when they're old, they'll never depart from it. Um, so I encourage my, my kids in Scripture. You know, we, we, we talk about the Bible. Um you know, I, I quiz them, I quiz them about what they learn at church, uh, because oftentimes I know people go to church, we go to church and we listen to a minister's preach, and then that's it. Um, but for me, I, I, I think it's more than just hearing, but I challenge them, I quiz them, and I said, okay, give me one thing that you learned from the message today. Mm. And then I challenge them, I'm like, okay, let's try and apply that during the course of the week. And yeah, that's that's some of the things I learned from my dad. Wow. It's funny that last part that you talk about challenging your kids um, to, to not only share with you what they've learned from a sermon, but also to implement that throughout the week by acting upon what they've learned. I do the same. I used to do the same thing with my son when he was growing up. At the end of the sermon, when we're on our way home, so what was the takeaway? What did you learn today? And we try to because I think when it when it when it comes to faith, and even when it comes to teaching your children stuff through modeling behavior, modeling is such an important part of wanting your children to see examples in yourself. Because they're watching you. Yeah, they're watching constantly. And so you can't, and, and they're, they're brutally honest. You can't fake it. You can't lie to them. They, uh, listen, my son would call me out. If I dare try to fake anything or try to even go, he would call me out because that's what he saw in me also. So because of that, he was learning to go, mm -mm, no. That's not how it goes. So yeah, I would do the same thing. And it's amazing what they share with you in, in, in those sessions where you're querying and asking what they learn because they pick up on so much, far more than we think that they, they pick up on, you know? Well, imagine this, you were a child once. <laughs> you know, as parents, we often forget that we were kids as well. Um, but we were kids once, and what do we do? We used to watch our parents. I, I know I used to watch my dad. Um, the things that I do not, you know, I told you about that story with the hair. Yes. It's observation. I, I watched my dad. I see what he did. I saw how he played. Mm -hmm. and, and in so doing, I'm doing the same thing. Um, yeah. What you're doing, you're cementing memories that your girls will then use in their role as parents when they become parents. 
it's amazing how we become, there's so much of our parents that are in us and in who we are that we sometimes don't see it until much later on. You are like, oh my God, I have become my mom or this is so my dad. It's uh, Stephen. Whew, I see my mother in me more and more every day. I'm like, wow. <laughs> so yeah. When you're growing up, did your mom say, when you get your own kids, you're going to do the same thing? <laughs> yep. yep. I remember those conversations. Yeah. You wait. You wait until you become a parent. And sure enough, she was right. <laughs> she was right. You know, Stephen, one of the things that many of us have experienced in our journey in parenting, our kids that a lot of us uh, myself included have experienced uh, separation divorce and how we started out parenting changed sometimes it changed midstream sometimes it changed after a while but however it changed we have had to adapt and find new ways to effectively make sure that we are still being the best parent that we can be for our children. And oftentimes through divorce or separation, when we have to co-parent, uh, it sometimes, it almost always requires that we come up with a plan and work on something that works for both parents so that the children can continue to see a united front and know that regardless of how the parenting uh, dynamics have changed in terms of the one roof style of parenting with both parents or in separate places but still parent. How do you think you have developed a co-parenting plan? Have you developed one? And how it can help other men from your experience who have to co-parent and do the best you can to still provide that stability for your children? Barb, that's a tough question. Um, and I know a lot of fathers out there that are struggling with it, that piece. Um, I've come across quite a few. And it, it, is a, it is a struggle, it's a challenge, because in the, in the separation, in the divorce, in the break of those relationships, there's a lot of emotions, there's a lot of friction, there's a lot happening. Um, and that can impact your parenting style, your, parent, your parenting, your kids. Um, I think the best plan you could ever do is one, take care of yourself. Start taking care of yourself um, as an individual, uh, as a man. Because oftentimes I know as men, we really don't take care of ourselves. Um, you know, I saw some stunning stats. Actually, I, I, I saw an ad even today where it says, um, three out of four men, and this is in Canada, three out of four men will commit suicide or have suicidal thoughts. Three out of four. Imagine that. Wow. Um, so, you know, as men, we, we struggle with a lot of things. And oftentimes we don't have the platform, we don't have the space, we don't have the opportunity, or we don't even have someone we can trust to actually share and articulate some of those things that are, that are going through. Um, you know, women are a little bit more vocal and, and verbal and they, you know, they have their girlfriends on that they are expressive towards, you know, I, I, I remember the first time I, I heard about a divorce party, I was like, what the heck is that? A divorce party. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's just like, that's how some people actually make that celebration. I'm like, for guys, we don't really do a celebration, <laughs> divorce party. Um, but, you know, Guys don't really talk about those things or those feelings that you have, but taking care of yourself means you have to be vulnerable with another man. Um, 
and that's important and you know it's it's sad sometimes some guys their response is come on man man up you're a man i was like uh, i don't think that's an appropriate response in fact oftentimes when i hear some guys talk and they're expressing themselves i just sit down and i listen i don't say anything um because and and here's the thing when a guy is speaking oftentimes he doesn't want a response he doesn't want somebody to tell him well you should do this or you should do that no he just wants to verbalize it i had a friend of mine who was actually that person for me and we used to call it our verbal vomit session where i would just you know if something was happening i just and then when i was done it's done. <laughs> we don't, you know, we, we is, you know, when you vomit something out, you clean it up and you throw it out. You don't go back to it. Right. Um, and there, there are going to be those moments, and I, you know, those are the moments I call taking care of yourself. And then, but you don't stay there. You got to take care of your kids. Um, but in taking care of yourselves, it gives you the strength to be able to do that for your kids. You know, um, I remember the first time I, f I went on a plane and they they tell you, you know, put that mask over your face first before you put it over the, your child. I'm like, logically, I'm speaking, I'm like, because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of protective in my nature. So in my head, I'm thinking, no, you put the mask over the child's first and they put it over yours. But then over time, you realize the reason why, because if, hey, if you pass out, you can't do anything with the child. So take care of yourself first and then take care of the child. So the same principle applies, you know, take care of yourself, then you can take care of the kids afterwards. Uh, and I know it, it's hard because sometimes you just got to step away from the situation because it can get really overwhelming. So you step away from the situation to, to heal your wounds, um, take care of yourself, and then get back in the game, um, you know, and, and actually, that's, that's partially another another advice a, a friend of mine says stay always stay in the game you know i love playing soccer but but here's the thing and i tell this with, with the guys that i play with staying in the game is not necessarily you on physically on the field while you're on the sideline you need to stay in the game as well because you're watching what your opponent is doing you're also cheering on your teammates and telling them and encouraging them on the field. So stay in the game. Oh my God, what a great nugget of wisdom and great advice. Because I, I often believe, a lot of my friends are male, as you know, and the things that they share with me uh, regarding their journey in co-parenting have oftentimes left me going wow men really need to have a voice and have their voices be heard um and and as you rightly put it many women when we're going through emotional uh hurt and breakups and whatever uh end that comes to relationships we oftentimes are more apt to share to to find counsel in our friends uh we're even more open to going to therapy because th there's a socialization uh a difference in our socialization where it is more acceptable for a woman to share feelings and express feelings whereas for a man the whole idea of you you, meet, you need to man up and you need to be tough but men have feelings too and they have a need to be heard and to share and to express those feelings so i like the way you put it take care of you first make sure you're well because if you're a healthy father mentally emotionally physically you're a better parent you're a better dad you're a better Absolutely. partner in co-parenting your children because you're healthy so it is it is really 
something that I think more men need to hear. I like the fact that you say sometimes you need to have that verbal diarrhea or verbal vomit where you just get it out and that it's okay to feel that way and to share with other men about what you're going through. Because I think certain things, the same sex, there's more relatability when you share those emotions and those feelings, because we are different in terms of our emotions and our makeup. It's just a fact. Men and women are different in those ways. And so having someone that you can trust, that's the big, a key word that you said. You know, I have always been someone that people come to to share their emotions with. And, and I tell people, you get with me in any friendship, trust and loyalty. You have got to respect people's information and treat it with the highest regard and their privacy so that they can feel safe to come to you. And I'll say it in a Jamaican way. Boy, Barbara, your mother will raise you good. You <laughs> 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 need to have this conversation. I know many times people are a bit shy from opening up in a, in a more public space. But I also know that you have such an amazing story to share. And I know that you are someone through your writings have expressed a lot of these feelings. And I just wanted men who view my channel, who follow me, to have the experience of hearing another man talk about how important it is to stay in the game no matter what. Yeah, and that's important because our kids need us. Yeah. You know, I, I, I see it too many times. Um, <clears throat> actually, I'll challenge people on Father's Day. It's, it's probably one of the most painful times for a lot of guys. Um, but, you know, reach out, reach out to another, another man, uh, a father. And I encourage guys. Guys, you know, encourage fathers. Cause that's what keeps that's, that's what kept me in the game other guys you know that's what kept me in the game because i can tell you there were there were times when i was like you know but other guys helped me stay in the game and and my my goal my challenge now is encouraging other guys encouraging other fathers encourage other men to stay in the game and to be the best dad you can be. Don't let anybody tell you that you're deadbeat or you're. Don't 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 take those words. Focus on taking care of yourself, stay healthy, and then do the best you can for your kids. And it does have nothing to do with money. It has nothing to do with with what you have. It has all to do with who you are as an individual. Stay in the game. Stay in the game. Oh, Odell, Stephen Paird. It was such a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for joining me here on Food for Thought. Always a pleasure talking to you as well, Barb. Absolutely. If you like our content, you like my channel, go ahead, subscribe, hit that like button, and share this video as fathers. Stay in the game. Have a great holiday, Stephen. We'll get together and talk again. Look forward to it. Thank you. Bye. Bye.